Good evening, supercomputers, and welcome back to Denver. We're here at Supercomputing 2023, end of day three's coverage. We're going to have a little bit of analysis for you. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous dream team of sidekicks, Lisa Martin, David Nicholson, and John Furrier. Absolutely outstanding yeah. job this week, fam. This yes, has been great. Awesome. great. Yeah. Yes, this has been great. All right, John, I know that you're going to have to leave the show tonight and not be here with us because of some very important meetings in Seattle. What's your big takeaway from the show? Uh, I think the Dell booth here and their support for theCUBE was a success, so shout out to Dell. But I think, if you look at what Dell and, and other people are doing here, this is a collaboration ecosystem that's developing from the chips to the cloud, and you're going to see open standards become a theme, you're going to see how this is going to shape the large scale AI training and inference future, and I think the killer app is going to be inference, and data will be upside down with kind of new data management models, and it's going to be an opportunity to allow the hardware matters crowd, figure out how to architect and build better products to make AI work better at scale. So, you know, my big takeaway is not going to be your yesterday's HPC academic grinding, inch by inch, you know, first down, do it again. It's yep. going to be step function change when you start to see the chips and the networking and the AI scaling. And that's, that, that to me is going to be the big story. And, and once that starts happening in production, you're going to start to see, again, we've seen ecosystems flourish in other generations, um, and they just explode in, in, in collaboration, value creation, entrepreneurship, um, students, um, existing companies, all going to get better. Some will die, some will fall on the wayside, um, some won't make it if they don't get on the right side of that. So I think this is going to be probably the most exciting ecosystems to watch for the next few years. You know I couldn't agree with you more, and I'm thrilled that we get to cover it here on theCUBE. Lisa, first yeah. adventure here in supercomputing land. I know. What, what is the most striking thing to you? What are some of the things that you've learned? This has got to be so fun for you. I think the thing that struck me the most is kind of along the lines of what John just said, and I'm remembering back to our conversation with the Director of Advanced Computing at TAC just a couple hours ago, and the, the collaboration of industry, academia, government, how they're tackling these large obvious problems with HPC. We talked about security and they talked about that. That is a, that is a big challenge for us to solve. Yeah. We haven't solved 100%. it yet in terms of open systems and HPC. But just what they're doing with funding from the National Science Foundation, what they're enabling students to do, how they're giving people uh, kind of this ubiquitous uh, access to supercomputing technologies to drive projects forward. I love that collaboration and Dave and I walked around the show floor earlier today and of course got stopped by NASA and, and my alma mater so it was always great to see what they're doing there. But I also love just talking with some of the universities and all right. of the student involvement. And John said it great this morning from dorm room to boardroom and you really feel that here. You really feel yeah. it and you see yeah, that's it. That's true. Yes. Yeah you really you really do see it and, and I know I love that I love that phrase as well. David, I'm curious for you, and because I love your very analytical brain, was there anything that surprised you about the week so far? Anything missing from the show that you expected to see? Or is everything as scripted? So I was disappointed by the number of llamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think more llamas. One was not enough. Not one enough. Is, one llama is never enough. <laughs> um, I, I, actually, it, it's interesting. We, we, use the, we use the phrase ecosystem a lot. Um, because a couple of things that have struck me from an ecosystem perspective. Uh, when you walk around, you see a lot of folks focusing on the thermal dynamics and cooling and how do you dissipate heat. Um, I talked to one manufacturer of quick disconnects that are used in cooling systems. And they are a very, very sophisticated machine shop that manufactures these very, very specific devices. And it just reminded me of how broad the ecosystem is in this space. It's not just about totally. learning to code and computer science, it's about all of these other things from an industry perspective and an ecosystem perspective. But my biggest thought, frankly, I had this sort of dawn on me just a few minutes ago. And that is, uh, when I was a kid, I always thought it would be interesting to have a time machine to be able to go back in time and witness the primordial swamp that gave birth to life on Earth. You could say that right now this show is a version of a primordial swamp. And some what of the an things analogy. that are Seriously. here. Some of data swamp, by the way. Some of the things. <laughs> I wonder we need our data hygiene, John. <laughs> That's some, right. of, yeah. some of the things are, going, are not going to survive yeah. and other things yeah. will evolve. Yeah. And this whole thing about AI being the next evolutionary step 
for yeah. humanity, uh, there's some truth to that. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the universe willing, we, we live long and uh, happy lives, we'll look back on this as a time, yes, live long and prosper, yeah. Seth. <laughs> Scotty, more power. Yeah. We're going to look back, no, no, we will look back on this time as truly the wild, wild west, and yeah. wow, wow, we really, and we will probably say, wow, we really didn't know just how far we were we going to go in such a here. short period of time. Yeah. So yeah. welcome to the, I, I didn't mean swamp, I meant soup, primordial soup. Oh, that's, welcome, that's a lot different. Welcome to the soup. Yeah, soup is delicious, swamp not so much. So that's my, that's, that's my, that's my long answer. <laughs> a spatula would be great for that. <laughs> yeah, let's hear, let's, let's hear. <laughs> natural segue, natural segue. Yeah, na natural segue. As you know, we have a relatively new tradition here on theCUBE of doing a swag segment at every show. It's our goal to bring you here not only by having very exciting conversations with the thought leaders literally building our future, but also give you a feel for what it's like to be at the show floor. The buzz, in this case, the drum of the incredibly large processors and server racks that are here. There's liquid cooling that looks like a washing machine and is very uh, meditative to a degree. I found myself taking some mental breaks and staring at it. But it's a very fun experience <laughs> and I want to show off some of the fun <laughs> swag <laughs> that I have. And this was a really dangerous thing to give me. So let's talk about this first. We've got a spatula from Dell for stirring your primordial soup as you come up with your tech stack <laughs> for your artificial intelligence build and, and processing your compute, whatever that might be. I think that's awesome. John really likes to make fun of me for being a nerd, and I appreciate that I'm at home at this event with all of the nerd swag. We've got a nerd hat, as well as this pretty fun uh, AWS not wanting to feel left out. We've got a nerd t-shirt here, so yeah. I can literally put on my nerd uniform next time we're here at Supercomputing. I want to see that. Yeah, I'm definitely here yeah. for it. It's pretty fun. Because they've been a, a comment of a few of our few guests and definitely a talk trigger at Supercomputing, my Rubik's Cube earrings, which are real for the record, folks. I'm going to bring in a couple themes there. We have real Rubik's Cubes, which thankfully Christian on our staff can solve so that when guests mess with mine or when we want to play with this one, we are going to do a segment. We'll see how fast he can do it. All right, everyone, your challenge while I'm talking through this oh, is to man. mess that up. Oh, mess it as up. As humanly possible. It. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> not, not a surprise Rubik's Cube nope, I'm speed down. challenge. I promise, Lisa. It's like 1985. Also on the Cube theme, because we are the Cube, and why would we not continue to talk about Cubes? Cube T-shirt right here. We uh, this is this is a fun one, a binary cube actually. In this particular case, from uh, a high-performance computing company here. We did mention it earlier on the show, so I had to go get one. The Got a GPU shirt. I mean, I have to say, of all the Got Milk campaigns in the world, I never thought I would be holding up a Got a GPU shirt, but here we are. There's a first time for everything, folks. Speaking of first time for everything, and we did talk about their ARM processor inside of Vista with Tech earlier today, we have an ARM lunchbox. So when you're when you're on the show floor like this, it can be uh, exhausting, a lot of complex carbohydrates for hosts like us trying to keep our figure. It can really pay off in a lot <laughs> of different ways to bring your own lunch, and so this lunchbox from ARM is definitely... Is the leg version larger than that? <laughs> I don't know, oh. David. We'll have right. to design and, and ask them. We'll have to, we'll have to ask them what's in the we'll swing by. What's in the what's in the pipeline? Uh, this is an interesting one. So normally it would be very hard to get my attention with a water bottle. There's a lot of water bottles out on the show floor, and not a lot of them super nice and fancy. But the the folks at Blue Fours do quantum cooling. They have a very cool looking booth. I actually went and took a selfie with their hardware. That really is how nerdy I am. And they they gave me this water bottle, not just to show on the show, but because this is the only water bottle that they allow in their factory and, on, and in their clean rooms because it's leak proof. That's, talk about risk assessment. I mean, they're literally thinking about it all the way down to the water bottle. It makes sense when you're designing multi-million dollar machines yeah. for companies like IBM. Very cool. They've also got a, they called it a scarf, but it's a little bandeau. I often wear these on my wrist to wipe the sweat from the heat of the lights. So, two very functional, useful tools from our friends over at Blue Fours. Now, speaking of mesmerizing, I was talking about the liquid cooling earlier. The Vertiv folks who do liquid cooling have actually created this very, mesmerizing desk toy that I know was giving Lisa a much needed <gasps> mental break it earlier was. and I would love to make sure so you can pretty. continue to have that. Thank you. We mentioned that the show is the intersection both of academia, enterprise, startups, and the government. There are multiple government organizations here and I do think it's important to shout that out. There's a lot of really interesting collaboration happening and 
kind of surprisingly, some pretty impressive swag. Now, I'm gonna let the guys do a real nice close up on this ISO. USGS has created a series of cards that have images at, at different times apart. These are satellite images showing how the Earth is changing. We've got Las Vegas in my left hand showing the population density. I've got Sydney in my right. And these, these images are really cool. I mean, there's a whole stack of these cards, but I think sometimes we forget both how much the world has changed quite quickly, and we also forget that high performance computing, a lot of it came out of weather simulations and modeling with governments combining forces to forecast our weather. So I'm going to pass those around so everyone can see. The longest line here at, at Supercomputing was for the NASA booth. Not surprising, a lot of us big space fans, if you know me as much as I'm a nerd, I'm a super space nerd. And they're doing a very practical activation here. They're doing luggage tags. These are great. You can pick out your own front card. That's, and then uh, I'm going to cool. blur out my phone number on the back, because that's not quite <coughs> what I'm trying to solicit here. But you can put your personal information on the back. They laminate it for you, and you've got a nice little tag that reminds you of your time at Supercomputing and reminds you how cool NASA is every time you take a trip. Really excited about that. Going to show off a couple more pieces of swag from NASA because who doesn't want to look at Nebula, who doesn't want a nebula scarf? A, a nebula scarf, good old nebula scarf. I mean, I have to say I have a few in my closet. I'm kidding, but I think this is very <laughs> awesome. I wanted to share, uh, obviously NASA being extremely educational, I wanted to share this fun fact that they included on the back of this bookmark showing their machines. These are the big hardware machines powering things like the weather, like the climate forecasting center. And I'm going to read this out loud so I don't botch it. If every person on the planet added two numbers together each second, non-stop, it would take them almost 15 days to do the same number of calculations that Discover can do in one second. That's 8.9 quadrillion. Wow. 8.9 quadrillion calculations in a second. We talk a lot about compute power and calculations as, as the conversation around AI and LLMs really heats up. But that is a crazy thing to think about. If every single person was doing math on the planet, it would take two weeks to do what these machines here behind me can do in a second. John, how many exaflops would that be? <laughs> um, 25. Is it 25? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Appreciate that. A uh, couple more pieces of swag from NASA just because these are also very cool visualizations. This is really visualizing. I'm showing these not just because they're beautiful images, but because this is the, the consumer end of HPC. These are the products and the things that impact us. This is the uh, carbon and pollution and various things in our atmosphere here. This is a lens cleaner I'll definitely be using on my computer later today. And I have another one, same size, same shot, boys, of the, the fires that were in Canada recently. This is really dramatic and honestly kind of a haunting image. We are all Californians sitting here on this stage, very familiar with fire. And seeing this stuff visualized, uh, it really hits home yeah. the importance of the work that these high performance computing groups are doing yeah. to help predict disasters and, and help keep us safe and medical knowledge and so many really cool real world applications. Definitely. Now I got a little nervous when I saw that our booth neighbors were the NSA. <laughs> Kidding, I don't have anything to hide. They're probably listening. Now they're definitely listening. And our AI are. is also listening right now, so this is great. <laughs> nice one, Seth. Way, way to incriminate yourself. But they've got some really fun ones here. These are, uh, this says, this is not a recording device, and these are for unclassified ideas only. These are both post-its, which I find quite cute. These will definitely be sitting on my desk <laughs> alongside some of my fun swag from our events prior. And I'm just, I'm really delighted by them. Wait, it says this is a recording device. I just oh yeah, excuse me, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I thought you said this is not. Uh, this, it's possible I did. Are My dyslexia occasionally. No, 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 it's funny, but that, that's, yeah. it's, you know, it's equally as funny. We thought these were coasters. Yeah, right. yeah. I thought yeah. that was coasters. You coaster. know, we might have to put them on all of our, our computers or maybe on our cameras just as a little bit of a joke. Yeah. We can leave a little love notes idea. To, to the production team who does such a great job uh, on these, which we, which we absolutely love. All right, couple final things for us. Always a bunch of stickers at the show. It takes a lot to stand out in my sticker department, but I want to show off. Uh, this Weka sticker is un-F your data. Y'all know I love a good swear word campaign and it is just a lot of fun. I have also got, since again, since we're on the, we're on the nerdy theme and, and John likes to remind me what I really am, we've got nerd sticker and a talk nerdy to me right here. Oh, right here. Right here. Yeah, baby. I'll go ahead and pass these down so that everyone oh, feels like. I feel actually, like I need this. and if you're watching and you really feel like being supportive, we've also got team nerd stickers for you so you can, oh, hey. you can make it real clear that you're on team nerd, team staff, team cube with all of us here. Love it. Okay, and now to close us out because 
because this is a really wonderful opportunity. And I did mention it's it in our closing <laughs> segment yesterday. So here in Colorado, Colorado Kool-Aid is their, their hometown beverage. It is Coors. We've got a Coors banquet here. Ooh, it's nice and cool. Sitting inside this fabulous koozie from the immersion cooling company Midas. Now I gotta give them credit for the pun on cooling with the koozie. I saw it earlier, I threw it on an adult beverage that I had uh, yesterday and, and I just think it's great. So there is a, a snapshot of the very exciting ways that all the companies and booths here are trying to stand out at Supercomputing. Real curious for the guests, which one is your favorite? Ooh. Oh. John, let's go to you first. I kind of like that thing over there, that blue, blue thing. It? I do like that, yeah. It's very mesmerizing. It, it is that's very cool. kind of cathartic. Yeah, that's, yes. Pretty cool. yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. I do like the, the cards, I think that's intriguing. Right, such a nice way of being able yeah. to see, have a gateway discussion about HP. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Climate change, you see the, the snow melted. Oh no, it doesn't do climate change. Let's not joke there. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that, the cards are cool, very yeah. geeky. This is kind of more good for a desk. You're on a Zoom call and you go off camera. Yes. You know, just kind of chill. <laughs> yeah, the nerd sticker's always a winner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a least, nerd hat. I have a least favorite. I have, uh, it's the, 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 can you hold up the one that's a fake advertisement for travel into space? The, uh, the, the, one that, the one that shows that, look, it's in color, but it's really. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Our yeah. nebula scarf. Yeah, exactly. Folks, this ain't what it looks like in space. Don't, don't, this is, this is lobbying for space dollars. Is that a Four Seasons <laughs> right there? No, 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 what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I could I be wrong. I would go to the Four Seasons. <laughs> no, it's a race. I could be for wrong. The, yeah, it's for a race. record, I'm in. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no astronaut, but I think that that's colorized x-rays or something because, our, because human vision isn't really good enough to see. Are you shitting on my people? No, oh, I'm sorry. Did I, oh, that's right. Ooh. I'm not a NASA alumni. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to talk to you offset. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so just, you know, I, I have this argument <laughs> with my son all the time. I will go to Mars when the spaceship is like a Vegas hotel and when Mars is like New Zealand. <laughs> Until then, really? not interested, all astronauts are heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. I'm not one of them. For yeah. the record. <laughs> For the record. What about you, Lisa? I think I'm loving the trucker hat. It's pretty great. Especially that it's 3D and you have a shirt you can wear, so I want to yeah. see you on Insta in your nerd outfit. But I got to say, the winner for me is the spatula because I didn't know about the primordial soup that I was in. Yeah, but I made that up. They didn't. Here. They didn't know about That's that. That's why it's so. Because it, it doesn't maybe, make any sense. Maybe they were AGI. You didn't know it. Yeah, maybe they did. <laughs> Actually, yeah. They were doing simultaneous calculations and knew you were going to say but that. But the creativity of what you showed and the practicality, like you've got wardrobe items. You can oh, yeah. clean your glasses. You're going to be cooking for Thanksgiving with that. That'll be in a drawer, ten years from now, and you'll be using it like, yeah, weekly. Yeah. That, that right there, that spatula. So that, yeah. that does win on and the I'm utilitarian. And I'm going to think of you every single <laughs> yeah. time. The God GPU. I'm actually going to think of primordial soup every single yeah, time. The God That's GPU shirt was cool. I thought yeah. that was good, yeah, good gym shirt for sure. Clever. I thought you, we you have know. to get one for John because he's going to get FOMO. The, and, the, and the Amazon with the periodic tables was That's a good nerd. That's very one. clever. Those yeah. two were good Creativity shirts. at its I got to give them props on the shirts. Yeah, these, these nerds are doing yeah. a great job. David, you brought up a really good point that I just want to highlight. It's a big reason why I wanted to do this You about to mock me, segment. I'm giving you a compliment. I, maybe I'm going to reconsider that. Now that we're <laughs> uh, the, one of the big reasons that I wanted to do a swag segment, and I'm really grateful for John and the Cube team for making it happen, and the guys for always being such good sports when I do, is because 80% of swag ends up in the landfill within the first year. This yeah. is a multi-billion dollar industry that contributes to our landfills. Sustainability, a hot topic that we all have, that we are passionate about, as well as the conversations that we have with our guests. And so I, I do think it matters. Oh, I can tell you, I just got my passionate fist up. I felt that last last night too. I do really think it matters to be intentional and thoughtful with your swag, not only to stand out and to recruit new teammates, but to make sure that we're building a better future for our planet, for our children, for everything else that, that lies ahead. I think spatula that. wins on those points, seriously, because I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I know it's hard to take it seriously, but it is, yes, it is, <laughs> it, it will is be. Is the this, spatula paying for this segment? That is not <laughs> going for the spatula, sponsored by the spatula. Well, the, the spatula, <laughs> Gil, the spatula company. Yeah, the, the spatula company. No, but it, but it will be used, it will not end up in a landfill, it's going to end up in, you know, in a drawer being used. So it's a great it's a, point. So it's, it's a, a good, great it's a good thing. I think, I think it's brilliant. I, I do. I think I, it's brilliant. I wish I was in the. I was. I wish I was on the swag committee, or at least a fly on the wall in the room, when the votes yeah. were being cast, and the spatula 100%. won. I, well, and I would love to know if it was between other things, or if it was spatula, spoon, spork. 
and they went yeah. to Bachelor, you know, or whatever that might have been, right? I, who knows? Either way, thank you all for humoring me on this fantastic this segment. This is awesome, Seb. I love it. Thank I, you for doing that. I love it, too. I'm not sure what my favorite is. I actually think, for me, it's the USGS cards. I, I really love when something is such a simple illustration yeah. of something as yeah. complex as high-performance computing. I'm going to have those on my coffee table, and I look forward to talking to people about climate change and the work that we do here on theCUBE to tell those stories. John, David, Lisa, thank you so much for such an exciting three days so far. Very, very pumped. And thank all of you for tuning in, folks. We've only got one day left, day four tomorrow at Supercomputing here in Denver, Colorado. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for technology coverage.